Performance Upgrades. I'm your host, Dave Moss. The show is brought to you by sportbikerange.com. Performance parts, professional advice. Today we are fortunate to have Chris Van Andel with us from Motion Pro. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Dave. My pleasure. It's a lovely Saturday morning here in Northern California, hence the t-shirt. And we are going to go through Motion Pro's latest, hottest product, the revolver throttle. So, Chris, tell us all about it. Okay. Um, the revolver throttle is something that we developed just recently and it is a variable rate throttle that is designed for sport bikes or off-road motorcycles, actually pretty much any application that you would care to mention with a push-pull throttle assembly. It's designed so that you can change the amount of twist on the throttle from short to long so that you can tailor the function of your throttle to the type of riding that you're doing. And so, cool. say for instance, in a, in a street bike sense, a guy who's riding on the street wants to have a longer twist throttle for more control if he was riding on the street to right. make sure that you know, he can ride as safely as possible and he's not spending much time at big throttle openings. But on, if he goes to a track day and he wants to just be able to get to full throttle much faster, he can put a different reel in it, make his throttle a lot shorter and make it easier to get to full throttle. Uh, Off-road applications would be something similar for a guy who's riding a motocross track, just right. wants to get to full throttle fast, or but if he the next day he's riding in the woods, he wants as much throttle control as possible so that he can, you know, weave his way through a very tight trail. So, for what is the shortest pull to the longest pull with the full reels that we have? It's not something that's an absolute, and okay. so it depends upon what bike you've installed it on. And so some motorcycles will have a much longer throttle and it depends on what size the stock throttle is. And so for most applications, stock throttles fall somewhere towards the longer end of the throttle. So most of the reels in the revolver are faster. Okay. And each application is a little different. Each of the reels in the revolver throttle will change the twist in a 10 degree increment. Okay. A typical sport bike, the fastest one would probably be about 50 degrees, which is pretty short for a powerful sport bike. So we need to get rid of a, a fifth turn, an eighth turn, a quarter turn. We need to, for this product, just talk about degrees. It's more accurate, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good because I had no idea and I'm sure people buying the product would, would be, is it a fifth turn, a quarter turn, what is it? Yeah. So you've got to change your terminology to realize what you're working with in terms of the product. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Another great advantage of the revolver throttle is that as you change the reel sizes, uh, you see a lot of riders putting just different tubes into a stock throttle housing. And when you do that, the cable angle changes and, and the throttles always feel pretty poorly because the cables drag against the housings or right. against the elbows. The revolver throttle accommodates for that and it also accommodates for the length changes of the wires so that you don't have to readjust your cables every time you put a different reel in it. You can literally change oh, out a great. reel and ah. change the function of your throttle in about two minutes without any other adjustments. That's, I mean, that's a godsend because normally whenever you do that, like you say, we've got to pop the tank up, maybe move the airbox depending on the bike, and then get to readjust the throttles based on what you just did, so. Exactly. Wow. That's pretty significant. Yeah, we're pretty happy with it. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's get our project bikes onto the set so we can see how this is all going to work, what, what we go through for an application process and an installation. And Chris will work through us on every step of that as we go. So let's get this cleaned up and let's get the bike in. So the tank's gone. We, we're disconnecting everything from the airbox. In order to get the airbox off, we have to undo the Phillips screws. And you need a very long Phillips screwdriver to do that. Fortunately, the frame has holes in it, which will guide you into the correct spot. Because the Phillips screws do this with great care and attention, you don't want to ruin the head of the Phillips screw. Then have to go to the dealership for a screw they don't stock. Okay, our bolt's done on front. Chris has already taken the relays away. Our map sensor's off, so now we should be able to Work the box loose. Do we have any other sensors in line? There's one, two. OK, 
Okay, carefully remove the box, see if you have anything attached, which we do. We have a line up front, that's off. Now that our air box is off, what is really important, because you can see right here our throttle bodies are wide open on the secondaries, is to make sure you put a rag or something over the top while still allowing Chris and myself room to get the throttle cables. Stop anything going through the throttle bodies or getting stu stuck in there. That's absolutely critical. First thing we're gonna do is remove the throttle cables from the throttle bodies themselves. Now the cables are routed through here. You can see there's a retaining clip. The 10 millimeter bolt holds that in place. So this has to go to free up the cables. That way we can remove the clamp. Go ahead and then Chris can pull the cables through without interruption. And we're gonna repeat it on this side also where the control wires are connected through another routing clamp on this side of the steering head. And then once they're loose, then we can disconnect the stock throttle from the handlebar and remove it as well and get ready to put the new revolver throttle on it. It's a lot easier than the airbox. <laughs> yeah, there's not so many things to put on this <laughs> there one, that's for sure. Next step, what we're gonna do before we install the cables, we wanna lubricate the cables. Okay. Uh, just like any moving or sliding part, they need to be lubricated to extend their lifetime, but also to maximize the feel and sensitivity. If it's not lubricated, it, the throttle can feel draggy or feel notchy sure. without any lubrication. The nice thing about uh, these cables is that you don't need to use a bunch of specialized cable lubers. You can just shoot the lube right into the big bell mouths of our elbows. Nice. Yep. Just move the wires around to help distribute it down into the housing. This, uh, you'll want to repeat this four or five times and lubricate the cables all the way through. Once that's done, we're ready to install the cables. Now on all the cables, obviously they come separate and you have to figure out which is the push, which is the pull. So how are we going to attack that problem here with the Motion Pro revolver setup? It's relatively easy once you understand how the throttle is assembled. And the way the throttle works is in this fashion. So this becomes your pull cable. And so it's always the, if you're holding it in this orientation, it's the elbow on the right hand side is your pull cable. And that's pretty easy to see too with your Motion Pro here as a logo, it's gonna be underneath the logo so you just can't get that wrong. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's carry out. Okay. You always connect the lower cable first, always, because you then need to secure the cable housing into the throttle bodies itself. Put the next cable in, which will be your upper cable. Locate the dowel pin, run it around the throttle body itself, around the wheel, connect the cable into the housing. Then we've got our cables connected properly and an approximate setting for the cable adjustment, which we can come back to later. Next, the cables get routed between the fairing stay and the left fork leg, and then come over the top by the brake reservoir cylinder. And then we've got them in an approximate place that we need them to be. So then we can bring the housing together and go ahead and hook that all up. Note that the cables have to run underneath the rubber tube that connects the master cylinder to the brake reservoir. All right, now onto the throttle housing. 